guys, this is Michelle Kane with Michelle Kane Photography and Actions. And today I'm going to show you how I use Lightroom to organize my images. I use the color coding system to let me know which images have been fully edited, which ones are the originals, and um, in doing so, I'm able to quickly pick the pictures at the end of the editing process that will go to the clients and I can save them all out batch saving them from Lightroom for whatever purpose I need, whether that's web, for Facebook, or blog, or for saving out for printing. And I use the color code labels um, to keep track of which images are what. So you'll see on your screen that I have um, some color labels here. Some images haven't been color labeled at all. Um, and here's what the color labels mean for me. If you see a purple color label, it means that this image has been into Photoshop and is fully edited and is ready to go to the client. That's my final image that I'm going to give over to the client. The yellow represents an original of one that has been edited. So uh, I know that this yellow one has been taken into Photoshop and does have a Photoshop edit on it. Now if I edit it twice, say that I had an image that I liked um, and I went really rich and dark with it, such as this image here, um, but I also went kind of light or hazy or did a different treatment on it, then I might have three different edits. So I have the original yellow, and I'm going to make these thumbnails just a little bit bigger here. I have the original yellow, which is totally the original picture um, straight out of camera. Then I have this purple one, which is a lighter kind of um, treatment on it. Then I have this darker one and then I have another one that kind of has uh, some reddish tones to it. So these two right here are final edits that I might be deciding between um, which one's going to go to the client, the light one or the rich one. And then this one that's got the red represents uh, an image that has been fully edited but ultimately I didn't go with this one to give the client. So the purple ones are going to be my final ones that I'm deciding between to go to the client. So if I ultimately decide, you know what, we're going to go with this light one, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to give it, make sure it's purple, and then the other one I can turn red. So now these two images that are red um, show me that yes, they're fully edited, but I'm not going to give that to the client. So when I'm all done, I have an entire set of pictures from the session with color labels. Now I need to pull out just the ones I want to blog and get those ready and save them out as a group instead of one by one inside of Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm in grid mode, which you can hit G on your keyboard to get you into grid mode so you're seeing this. If you hit E on your keyboard, you're going to be in loop mode and you're going to see one picture at a time. So G for uh, group, grid mode. And then I need to come up here and uh, use this library filter. And right now, uh, there's no filter on, it's highlighted to none. So if you click something like metadata, it's going to pull up these four different uh, things that I can filter by. And ultimately, all I want to filter by is just I want the TIFF files, because I know that my edits are TIFF files, and I want to pull out maybe just the portrait-oriented pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the date one up here, and using this little arrow, I'm going to say remove this column because we don't need the date. And I'm going to go ahead and keep the file type, which I'm going to look for TIFFs and lenses I really don't care about as well. I'm going to remove that column. And then the label. This is important. We do want to go ahead and have the label. And you can see here that I have names for my labels. And of course, original image is my yellow. And um, my final edit is going to be the purple. So this is what I want to select. Now if you don't have these file type and labels showing up, what you can do is just click the name label and you're going to get a whole list of things that you can search for and filter by. And in this case we wanted label, so that's great. If you wanted to look for um, aspect ratio, which we're going to look for here in a second, we can put down aspect ratio. So label's good here. And now I'm going to click this little arrow at the end um, this little drop down arrow and I need to add a column and in this column under none I'm going to select the aspect ratio 
And now with, um, with the selections I have, I want to pull up the TIFF files. Again, those are Photoshop files. I want the final edit, so I'm going to pick that. And that just uh, took my selection down to the purple ones. Those are the ones I know I'm giving to my client. And now for the aspect ratio, I can say, okay, I just need to pick out for my blog the portrait oriented pictures. So these are going to be the only two in the fully set or the fully edited set that are portrait land portrait oriented. So now I know that I can select both of these. I'm just going to shift click them both. And then I like to just come down here on um, one of the images and I right click on it. And when I do that I get this little menu that allows me to say export and export. From there we're going to save both of these out at the exact same time and I would be getting them ready for my blog. I've actually created a preset for myself because I know that on my blog my images for portrait oriented pictures are only 500 pixels across. So I've created something for myself that I could come in here and click that and all of the settings except for where to save and what to call it will be um, correct. And that's a huge time saver right there. So for sake of setting up a preset that's brand new we could come in here and we could say, okay, if I'm going to do these for my blog, I'm always going to save them out to my desktop, so I could pick that for my destination. Um, you know, you could pick any of these. You can specify a certain folder on your computer. You can put it back into the original where all of these other pictures live. But we're just going to put it on the desktop. And then on the desktop, I want to put it in a subfolder. And I'll say Caitlin Blog. And that'll be the subfolder name on my desktop. The next thing I want to do is rename it. So I've got Michelle Kane Photography in there because it was the last thing I had typed in when I exported previously. And I'll just put um, teen. Michelle Kane Photography dash teen. Start number at one. The format, obviously we need a JPEG. We don't have um, PNG files in here, but that's the only other thing that I could upload to my blog, JPEG or PNG files. So JPEG's it. Um, quality, I always leave it 100 and then I limit my file size and really I don't want to file any bigger than like 500k but um, you can put whatever you want in here you don't have to limit it at all but this one has it at 800 so that means that none of the files will be any larger than 800k and really these two files by the time I've given it the size requirement it'll probably be somewhere around the 250 to 300k size so if you want to you know, bring that down to 500, you can. And then here's the main thing. We're going to size for portrait. So I know that on my blog, I need a 500 pixel width. So I could basically say I need the short edge to be 500 pixels. Or I could say I want the dimensions to be something by something. There's different options you have. But for this purpose, short edge is fine and 500 pixels and my resolution at 72 screen viewing pixels per inch. I can sharpen right here and I find that Lightroom does great sharpening. I've never had any issues with how it sharpens. Screen standard is fine. You can put it to low, high, however much sharpening you like to put on your pictures for um, the output is up to you. Uh, if I was getting ready for print, I would actually pick matte paper or glossy paper depending on what kind of uh, media I was printing on and then the amount corresponding however much I like there. So for us we're going to do screen and standard. I like to minimize my metadata and I'm going to add a watermark and if you're in Lightroom 3 or soon to be Lightroom 4 then you can um, specify your watermark and make it customized and right now I have a watermark in there that says 2011 light bottom left. So it's my photography right bottom left. So I could click on this and if I needed to adjust it or change it I can come in here and you see I've got a bunch of different watermarks and where they're placed and what color they are and what they say and we could go ahead and just put in um, edit watermarks and from that point um, I could type in just text if I wanted to just by select selecting text or I can choose a graphic and, and once I hit graphic, it's going to allow me to hit choose and where I have that on my computer, I'll pull that up. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to pull that into here. I'm just going to go ahead and do a simple text one. And it's got copyright Michelle Kane. Let's just go with that. 
you can see that it's a little bit off of the image so we can move it around and um, I can change the text and the um, alignment and all that the color the shadow all of these fancy little things you can change for me I'm just gonna go ahead and say I want it a little bit smaller and then I want to change and make it maybe a little over and of course vertical I need to go up so now this is going to be in this bottom left hand corner we could anchor it in that corner we could anchor it up here in the right corner or in the center wherever you want to anchor it to and then we hit save and we're just going to call it lame watermark and hit create so now that lame watermark is going to go on the front of all my pictures when it gets done exporting I want it to go ahead and show me in the finder um, on a Mac it's called the finder I'm sure PCs Explorer or something like that so I want to see those pictures and just double check them look at them, make sure they looked right after they get done exporting so here we go we're going to export these two pictures and it will take just a second and it tells you right up in the corner that it's exporting them then here it has shown me in the finder here are my two images if I go ahead and size them up that's the size that they're going to be with the watermark and they're ready to put on my blog so if we want to come through here and maybe do the same sort of thing for um, my landscape pictures I've already picked out my TIFF we've got the final edits and we now we now can look for the landscape oriented pictures and so that will pull up everything that's fully edited their landscape I need to select them all just shift click them again right click on one of the images down here in the film strip and we're going to export and this time let's set up a preset as we export so it's going to have the same settings as I had last time um, it keeps them in there from your last export so let's say we're going to do a preset well we're not we're going to know that every time we save is not going to go into a folder called Caitlin's blog so we could leave this empty we could even for the sake of setting up a preset we could say choose file later and it even tells you that this is a useful setting if you're going to use a preset because then it'll prompt you to go ahead and choose a folder later but I'm just going to say the desktop is where we want to save and then I'll know when I come in here to go ahead and create a subfolder for it then we're going to rename it and I'm just going to say Michelle Kane photography dash and then I know that I can add on my little extra every time I use this preset depending if it's a teen or a couple or a child or you know senior or something like that I can add that on to the end of my uh, custom file naming the file size is great we're doing sRGB again for the um, color space of the web you don't want Adobe RGB or Profoto when you're doing anything on the web you need it to be sRGB then we're going to go with instead of the short edge this time I'm going to go with the long edge and we need to go ahead and pick um, 630 pixels is what I can put for my long edge yours is probably larger resolution 72 sharpen is still the same we're still going to use that same lame uh, watermark and now this time we're going to come over here and click add and this is going to add these settings into a preset so now I can call my preset um, blog 630 just so it shows me it's a landscape and then I'll put land and if I had been like one for standard sharpening I might want to even put that in here STD for standard or maybe my sharpening was low and I sometimes do some pictures low sharpening some pictures high and some standard so maybe I want to differentiate that out of there so now at least this I know okay these are gonna go on the blog they're gonna be 630 across their landscape and it's low sharpening but this one's actually standard so I'll put STD and then you can say okay we're going to put that in a user presets or you can create a whole new folder that's maybe just blog and you have all your different presets are specifically for blog or maybe you're setting up a preset for print and you can make a new folder called print and have all sorts of new um, all sorts of presets for print let's make a new folder and just call it blog itty bloggity bloggity okay create and create and now we've got a new set of presets called Bloggity. There's the preset I just created. Now I can come in here and um, clean it up a little bit and hit 
I need a subfolder and we're going to call it Caitlin Blog 2 and I can name it Michelle Kane Photography Caitlin and if I need a starting number or something other than one I could change that everything else should be set up for you and so you hit export which I'm not going to do because I don't need to um, take the time to do that but you hit export and boom all of your pictures that are landscape oriented are saved out in one fell swoop um, without individually saving each one inside of Photoshop uh, which is very time consuming I can do it all at the end after I'm done editing and we'll have a nice little folder called Caitlin uh, blog 2 and they're all saved and ready to go so this same uh, system here works when you're setting things up for uh, printing you know you would come in here obviously and sharpen for like matte paper and standard and of course you wouldn't limit your file size you want your quality amped up for printing and if you were going to resize maybe you could uh, do that in here if you're going to do all like 8 by 10s for someone you could do that kind of image resizing honestly I don't resize anything in here when I'm getting ready to print so and of course your resolution at print is 300 so say you have all those things in there, you don't want to watermark, go ahead and set yourself up a preset, click add, and you're going to be able to create a preset for print. You might say print matte standard, so then you know it's for print, matte paper, and a standard amount of sharpening. And then the next time you go to save out your images for um, printing, you have a preset in here, you pick them all at one time and save them out. It's a huge, huge time saver. One last thing I want to show you is just how to label what these different color labels mean. As I hover over, you can see that little yellow tab comes up that says Final Edit. Um, the yellow ones will say Original Image. So if you want to name those, if you feel like you need a name for them and you can't remember which your colors represent, you can go to Metadata, Color Label Set, and Edit. And then in here you can say, okay, there's my final edit. Yep, those are purple. My maybes are uh, green. My secondary edits are red. Name whatever you want to call them in there. You can set up a preset. Um, save these settings as a preset. And maybe call them, you know, Carrie Joe's color pickers or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to hit cancel here because I don't need to save any of that stuff out. But that's how you would do it. I hope that helps explain how I organize my pictures out. I edit them all, um, just one right after the another. I save them right back into Lightroom so that there's no saving as inside of Photoshop. Just save so that they come right back into Photoshop or right back into Lightroom from Photoshop. And then this is the process of choosing um, by your library filter your TIFFs or your PSD files, your final edits based on your color labeling and your aspect ratio if you need to save things out at different sizes. Let me know if you have any questions. You can leave those in the comments below the video and hope you enjoy this tutorial. Look for more. I'm going to be doing more of these Lightroom tutorials um, based on various features that I use and love inside of Lightroom. Thanks for watching everybody and hope you have a great day.